Hello and welcome to Explore TBR, the channel dedicated to finding and exploring what remains of the historic Thailand to Burma Railway. In this video, I want to explain the origins of this channel, why the videos are the way they are, how to read the maps you see in the Explorer videos, and how to travel to and from the railway. So why did I make this channel? Well, over the last 20 years or so, I've done quite a lot of research on the Thailand to Burma Railway, and often when I was searching for information on how to find the railway, the results that came up were just more people asking the same questions as I was. There was very little information on the location of the railway today. But I found two distinct groups of people looking for information on details of the railway. The first were railway historians or relatives of POWs who perished during the construction of the railway, and the second was a surprising number of model railway and railway simulator enthusiasts trying to accurately recreate sections of the wartime railway. But of course, accurate measurements to base a scale model on are simply not available. During my exploration of the railway in Thailand, I had amassed a lot of GPS data on the route of the railway and features such as cuttings, bridges, embankments, stations and sidings, etc. And was starting to think about publishing some kind of guidebook about the railway with very detailed scale maps created from my GPS log files. At the same time, I noticed that most people who want to explore the death railway do so on group tours from Kanchanaburi. The tours visit the bridge on the River Kwai and either the Wampo Viaduct or Hellfire Pass. But these tours drop people off for half an hour or so so that they can have a quick look, but then it's back on the bus and off to an elephant camp or waterfall or something like that. I felt that there must be people who want to explore more of the railway but don't know how or where to find it. So my intention was to put out a guide for anyone who is interested in exploring the Thailand to Burma Railway. A guide that would help someone travel to, locate and then explore some of the most interesting sections of the railway, at their leisure and without any other assistance. So that it might reach a wider audience, the guide eventually took the form of this YouTube channel rather than a physical book. So here we are. In my videos, you'll probably notice that I focus purely on the details of the railway itself, and not on the prisoners who built it, the jungle POW camps and the terrible conditions in those camps, or the wartime history of the railway. These, of course, are the real story of the railway, so why did I leave them out? The reason for this is that all of the history of the railway and the POWs suffering in those awful camps has already been covered in depth by people who are far more knowledgeable than I am, and that information is widely available. Although I am deeply interested in it, I didn't have anything to add which isn't already available. But what I did have was all this information about the railway as it is today. Of course, there are also people much more knowledgeable than I am on this subject, but there is not much information publicly available about exploring the railway. So that's what I decided to focus on, just how to find and explore the railway. For each section along the railway, I've made a map showing all the details and interesting features along that stretch, tagged with GPS coordinates. I'll take a moment to explain how to read the maps. I've used something similar to the British Ordnance Survey system for showing cuttings and embankments. These dashed lines show the top edge of the feature and the squiggly lines run downhill. So here's a cutting with the edges up higher and downhill towards the track, the same on both sides of the track. The dotted lines indicate where a trestle bridge stood during the war. None of the wooden bridges are still standing, but in some places the concrete foundations and footings can still be found. To help the railway modelers, I've shown the profile of the bridge itself. For this bridge, the ends stepped down into the valley, not on a smooth slope. Three steps on the west side and four on the east. The arrow shows which way the profile picture aligns with the map. This is an embankment, downhill away from the track on both sides. Another short bridge, and this feature is a ledge cut in the cliff. On one side the line is cut into the cliff side, and on the other the rock rubble slopes down and away from the track. Each of the photos is numbered, with a corresponding shape on the map showing the location where the photo was taken and the direction the camera was facing. The GPS markers include latitude and longitude coordinates like this one, H8, which marks the location of Hintock Station. As I mentioned earlier, this channel was originally intended to be a book and was going to include all these maps along with a table of the coordinates, so they each had a label like H8. H was for the Hellfire Pass map, K for Kinsayok, W for Wampo, etc. With the switch to YouTube, these labels aren't really necessary, but I didn't go back and remove them all. All of the sites in the videos are within a few kilometers of Highway 323 between Kanchanaburi and the Three Pagodas Pass. Getting around is not a big problem. The easiest way, if you can ride a motorbike, is to rent a motorbike in Kanchanaburi. 
There are many places along the guesthouse road where you can rent motorbikes, and a few also rent out cars. You'll have to leave your passport as collateral, but in all the times I've rented bikes, I've never had any problems with this. Another way to get out to the railway sites is on the local bus, route number 8203. They leave Kanchanaburi every half hour or so and will pick up and drop off passengers anywhere along the route back and forth to Sanklaburi. If you're standing on the roadside along the highway, just flag down the bus as it approaches. Tell the conductor where you want to go. When you get there, ring the bell and they'll stop and let you alight. It's that easy. The train is a convenient way to get to or from the Wampo and Namtok hikes, but trains don't go beyond Namtok. Riding the trains is one of the true pleasures of traveling in Thailand. The windows are open and the scenery is magnificent. There are frequent stops which allow food and drink vendors to board the train. Don't be afraid to try the food. It's safe and very tasty, but often fiery spicy. Check the train schedule ahead of time, but take note that trains are often late. Fares for foreigners are 100 baht no matter where you get on or off. You can buy tickets from any station or pay the conductor when you get on the train if you get on at a point that doesn't have a proper ticketing station, for example at the Wampo Viaduct. In the 1980s, the Thai government built a dam near the Takanun area, which submerged a large portion of the railway under the new lake all the way to Timongta. The railway is above the water level for a short stretch between Timongta and Nikkei Bridge before disappearing under the lake again until Shimo Sankarai. The water level in the lake is variable and is generally going down. Many of the areas just below the surface, which I explored by canoe years ago, are now dry land some distance from the receding waters. Even the satellite view of the lake on Google Maps may be a couple of years old and quite outdated. The sections of the railway near the Burmese border, such as Nikkei and Sankarai, are too far away to be a comfortable day trip from Kanchanaburi. Sanklaburi is 220 kilometers northwest of Kanchanaburi and takes half a day to drive up and as long back again. The best option would be to make it a four-day excursion from Kanchanaburi. On the first day, travel up to Sanklaburi and stay overnight. The second and third day would be enough time to explore the railway at Nikkei, Sankarai and Three Pagodas Pass with the trip back to Kanchanaburi on the fourth day. If you drive a car, allow two and a half to three hours for the trip. On a motorbike, how I normally do it, allow at least four hours, including petrol and drink stops. If you take bus 8203, allow six hours or more for the trip. If you're driving, there are many petrol stations along the highway, so don't worry about running out and getting stranded somewhere. In each of the videos, I'll explain more about the best way to get there and back, whether food and drinks are available nearby, and what to wear. Some of the hikes can be done in shorts and sandals, others will require more protective clothing. All of the hikes can be done by people in average physical condition. I'm 53 this year, in okay shape, and for me these hikes range from easy, like around Kanchanaburi and Wampo, to quite challenging, like Kinsayok and Nikkei. It depends a lot on what time of the year you are there. The dry season makes it much easier to hike along, while in the wet season the railway line can be completely overgrown. To be honest, it can be completely overgrown in the dry season too. The condition varies a lot. I walked the Kinsayok section once in shorts and t-shirt without a problem, went back again the following year thinking shorts and t-shirt would be okay, only to find the line overgrown with thorny vines and brush. Not having a machete with me, I emerged at the other end of the hike a tattered and bleeding mess. I recommend that you bring a hiker's GPS unit with you. The GPS receivers that are built into most mobile phones have very poor battery life and won't even last a day. The navigator type that you find in cars generally require a road map to follow and there are no roads where you'll be going. What you need is a unit which follows latitude and longitude coordinates and can navigate you to waypoints in the middle of nowhere. That's what a hiker's GPS does perfectly. I use a Garmin eTrex 10, which is Garmin's bottom-end GPS unit, but it does everything I need, and a pair of AA batteries last three or four full days. Higher-end models have color screens or touch screens and better base maps, but many people find the color screen or touch screen too difficult to read in bright light. A basic GPS unit is all you really need, but you can research GPS receivers and decide what's best for you. There is a very real danger of getting lost in the jungle. In some areas the railway line may be badly overgrown with thorny brush, requiring a detour around. The GPS will keep you going in the right direction toward the next point, and it's impossible to get lost. If you don't bring a GPS, at least bring a compass so that you will keep going roughly in the right direction. It can be very disorienting in the jungle. Every direction looks the same, and Murphy's Law will have the sun directly overhead when you least want it there. It is the tropics after all. 
I recommend that you follow a buddy system and travel in pairs or more. If you have a motorcycle breakdown in the middle of nowhere, it's helpful to have a buddy with a second bike. Also, in the unlikely event that you get hurt in the jungle, you wouldn't want to be alone. If you don't have anyone to travel with, at least leave details of exactly where you're going and when you expect to return at your guest house so they can send someone looking for you if you don't come back on time. It's unavoidable that you will find yourself walking along the railway right-of-way in Kanchanaburi, Wampo and Namtok. While this will be trespassing in most developed countries, it's a fact of life in Thailand and many of the locals use the tracks as a convenient path. Be vigilant, keep your ears open and be aware of when trains are due. Motorcycling in the rural areas of Kanchanaburi is quite safe. The roads are in excellent condition and there's very little traffic. The drivers are cautious and will steer well around you. And on the main highway 323 there is a paved shoulder which motorcyclists can ride on anyway. I really enjoy motorcycling in Thailand. When I was there in February 2013 with my brother, one of the bikes had a blowout on the highway. That's the only problem I've ever had in Thailand. If you have any problems, flag down one of the locals and they will figure out what's wrong and how or where to fix it. Bike repair shops are frequent along the highway and repairs are cheap. Incredibly cheap. The time when we got the flat tire, the guys in the shop dropped what they were doing, got to work on the bike and had us back on the road in about 20 minutes. They charged 100 baht all in, including labor and the new tube. 3 US dollars in 20 minutes and we were back on the road and of course smiles and laughter all around. If you are motorcycling out of Kanchanaburi, the logical route would be to follow Sangchudo Road northwest out of town and then turn left on Highway 323. Traffic is usually very heavy on Sangchudo Road and if you're nervous about this then take the back way out of Kanchanaburi. From Mei Nam Kwai Road where all the guest houses are, turn left at Sujai Road at the second 7-Eleven and go over the bridge. Turn right and follow the road that was a railway siding in World War II to where it joins road 3305 and follow that north to Highway 323. This is much more scenic and has little traffic. From that point, Highway 323 west towards Burma also has little traffic and is very safe. When you're walking along the railway line, please be mindful that this railway is an important historical site. Don't take anything and please don't leave any litter behind. Try to imagine what it must have been like for the prisoners who built the railway. Try taking your shoes off and walking barefoot for a while. Most of the POWs had no shoes at all and worked amongst sharp rocks, branches and thorns every day for months on end. If you're hungry, imagine doing the heavy manual labor of building a railway while you were literally starving. If you're thirsty, the POWs had one small canteen of water to last an entire day of hard labor under the hot sun all with dysentery and tropical ulcers and worse, not to mention the psychological anguish. I don't want to belabor the point, but it's hard to overstate how awful the conditions were for the POWs, so take a moment while you're out there to reflect on their suffering and resilience and appreciate what they accomplished. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting or informative. If so, please give the video a like and feel free to subscribe and check out the other videos on different sections of the railway. They're all linked in the description below. If you have any comments, I'd like to hear from you. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.